So welcome everybody. This is the SharePoint uh, Developer uh, Community Monthly Community Call May 2018 edition. So this is May 28th, uh, and uh, basically this is the typical monthly community call where we're going to go through the latest news uh, from SharePoint uh, development side, from an engineering side, or from a SharePoint community side. We're going to talk about some new announcements. Uh, so I'm going to uh, spill the beans, so to say, for some of the things which partly was mentioned already in uh, yesterday in Build, but we're going to talk about those things in this call as well. But I'm going to also keep a few items, uh, let's say, in secrets, and I do apologize on that. That's for say request for marketing. Uh, I'm going to mention them, but I'm not going to uh, explain what they are, as because they are in the roadmap slide on the on the presentation, uh, which will be then announced and demoed later. Today today in Build, which is getting recorded, and also on Thursday morning, uh, PST time uh, frame, uh, AKMS SP Dev that's uh, SPFX call, the, the bi-weekly special interest group call for SharePoint Framework. We're going to do live demos on the new capabilities as well. We do have three different demos today. So first, Paolo uh, and Irvin, this is kind of a uh, uh, well double demo. So Paolo is going to talk about the schema improvements for the provisioning engine, and then Irvin is going to talk about the engine changes on that one. And this relates on the DMP, PMP remote provisioning engine which still actually has a interesting uh, a role in the future, uh, regardless of the site designs and site scripts. And we can talk about that one during the demos and after the demos as well. Well, especially now that we, whenever you re uh, see what are the new schema adjustments, you will realize what is the role of the BMP provisioning engine in the future, uh, regardless how far the site designs and site scripts uh, are going to go. And then ELO is going to do a live demo on the latest on the open source SharePoint framework controls. Uh, these are super, super awesome controls, which is going to help you to improve your productivity as a developer uh, to make extremely easy and fast uh, development uh, of SharePoint Framework web parts, as long as you're using React or if you're using, if you need to have a property pane controls in your web part. But Ilya is going to explain that as the last demo today. Let's see how much time we have for Q&A. I do not have a hard stop at uh, on the hour, but let's see how far uh, this will actually go and how long it will take. We'll target obviously to be a one hour, but let's see how it goes. And good morning and afternoon and evening and whatever from wherever you are calling. Uh, this, uh, like mentioned, I'm, I'm calling from uh, Redmond campus this time, heading the build uh, right after this call in Seattle. Anyway, so let's actually get going uh, on the, today's presentation. I do have a few slides. I try to minimize these as much as possible, so we will we'll have time for live demos and discussion on the new stuff. Uh, before we go there, quickly explaining our SharePoint dev community uh, thinking. So obviously, we do have SharePoint developer group in the tech community site, AKMS SP Dev or SP PMP community uh, for discussions and questions. This is much better forum than try to, for example, ping me with your questions because I simply do not scale. So let's try to get those questions uh, and a for, uh, to a forum where people can find the questions and help each other. We do have a bi-weekly SharePoint framework special interest group call every single uh, bi-weekly Thursdays uh, on 7 a.m. Pacific time. We do understand that for Pacific people, that's pretty early or it actually might be great time because it's just before you go to work. So you can actually join on that call and listen and see demos while you're having your breakfast. Who knows? Uh, on the other hand, it's a global world, so it doesn't matter which time the calls are. It's going to be wrong time for some people anyway. And then we have a bi-weekly SharePoint uh, general dev. This is around CSAM, REST APIs, uh, solution designs. We talk about site designs, uh, site, uh, SharePoint column formatting uh, topics on these calls bi-weekly as well. So one call for SharePoint Framework and one call for kind of all of the other stuff. And then we do have these monthly community calls, and these are meant to be more run-through of what has happened within the past month. Also, uh, cool demos, the latest changes, uh, any announcements from uh, SharePoint Engineering will be done in these calls as well. Good. Uh, so let's actually move on uh, on the actual topics. Uh, so uh, quick numbers from April. Uh, we actually previewed some of these already last week in the one of the special interest group calls, but we had a 100, 162,000 uh, watch times in a minute uh, watch time in YouTube. We're breaking like 1.6 million in a year, which is pretty decent. Uh, there's a 37,000 visitors in a GitHub for average two weeks. This is, by the way, by far the biggest uh, GitHub organization underneath Office. 
So anything else underneath office isn't nearly as close as like one fifth of the of the numbers and visitors uh, in GitHub. So that clearly shows that the SharePoint community is is learning how to use the open source and adapting to open source technologies uh, fast, which is great, obviously. Uh, quite a lot of use in GitHub as well. Uh, on docs.microsoft.com, our official SharePoint developer documentation, 823,000 views. Uh, I'm crossing fingers to hit 1 million by end of June. Who knows? Uh, there's no, it's just my personal bet against myself if we can get the quality of the docs in the right level and people actually may find them useful. Um, on the PMP open source component use, it's, this is actually pretty interesting. This is where the, the classic SharePoint PMP actually started. So we started creating uh, reusable compo con components and controls, but this also shows the power of the SharePoint community, because there's 11,000, more than 11,000 tenants where open source reusable controls and components are being used, and that's mind-blowing, because um, it shows that even enterprise customers are adapting these new ways of using open source components, as long as they're in quotes, backed up uh, by the, the group of people who want to actually help you to be successful. So 11, more than 11,000 tenants have used uh, the PMP open source components in the last month, and this includes the PMP Season component, PMP JS, and uh, the PMP PowerShell, and these are the ones which we are tracking. We almost break or broke to the 10 billion requests uh, with those components last month against SharePoint Online, but not quite, so it was super, super close. And most used, used capabilities, the provisioning uh, engine, no doubt. We're going to talk about that one slightly later today in the demos as well. Good. Uh, what about SharePoint Framework? So on the previous slide, it was mentioned that these numbers are not public, and they are not actually technically public uh, either. Uh, but what I want to show with this slide is that if you're wondering that should I move to SharePoint Framework development, uh, is anybody else actually doing it? Doing it? And the answer is absolutely. It's, it is the, by far the fastest technology being adapted in Office 365 right now, uh, in, and it's being used. Um, countless, countless of tenants. These are just uh, the growth charts without any actual numbers to show you from last September until the, actually these are from yesterday, so until yesterday. So how fast, uh, actually that's Sunday, is the last day? Yes, Sunday. Uh, how fast and what's the growth uh, curve uh, for the adaption or usage per person or usage per tenant? And they look actually quite uh, identical, which is pretty cool. Uh, the big jumps on the usage per, uh, per user means that a larger customers are taking uh, these things to induce, um, and that doesn't actually jump to usage per tenant because it's the same tenant where there was already development happening before. But it's super cool to see the adaption being this fast, uh, and it clearly shows that the SharePoint framework helps people to be successful. So if you're wondering, should I actually have a look on that one? Should I invest some time on that one? Is there a future on that one? Absolutely that there is. We built all of our stuff, native stuff, first party stuff, out of the box stuff in SharePoint Online using SharePoint Framework. So that gives you an indication of, of how much we actually trust on the SharePoint Framework. And that wasn't the case with the SharePoint adding model. If we think about, the, I wouldn't say classic adding model, absolutely valid still. Uh, adding model is for third party customers, third party uh, uh, components. And we in SharePoint Engineering, we didn't use adding model as such as the platform. With SharePoint Framework, that's different because we, we build all of our modern experiences using SharePoint Framework as well. Super cool. <coughs> Good. Moving on, I think. So, remind us on the documentation. Uh, documentation and guidance, AKMS SP DevDocs, uh, is the address, or docs.microsoft.com slash SharePoint slash uh, development, or slash SharePoint, and then clicking the development link from there. And this is the, the consolidated uh, platform for all SharePoint development documentation. The latest, what I heard, is that the MSDN is going to be shut down. Uh, by end of June. Uh, I'm not sure what the shutdown technically means, but it might actually mean that it will be uh, uh, actually actually shut down, so the MSDN content will be gone. So we are moving all of the content uh, to docs.mystuff.com, and you're able to also contribute on this. You're able to uh, provide issues on this. All of the comments and everything else uh, is in a GitHub. So this is a really, really great uh, step forward on making sure that anybody, if you find a typo, uh, you don't have to worry about how to uh, report the typo. You can easily report the typo using um, the GitHub tooling or the, the tooling in the docs.microsoft.com site, which wasn't the case with MSDN, uh, because MSDN was slightly different. 
Now, on the other stuff, running into issues. So if you run into any issues on SharePoint uh, APIs, SharePoint Online APIs, SharePoint On-Premises APIs, SharePoint Framework doesn't work as, as you're expecting, uh, or suddenly something changed, don't ping me uh, in email. Definitely don't do that. That's, uh, that doesn't scale. Uh, go to the, uh, this issue list. Uh, this is an issue list in the SP Dev Docs, so the GitHub repository behind of the SharePoint development documentation, and submit an issue for us. We triage these issues uh, typically twice or three times in a week. This week will be, however, an exception because we have built and all of the people who should be triaging these uh, issues are quite busy, uh, so to say. Um, so there will be a small delay on catching up on, on the uh, issue list. Um, and uh, thanks, Ralph, from, from the comments as well. So, uh, getting some of, the, some of the issues resolved. <laughs> well, it might take a while. If it's a critical issue, we absolutely jump on it because we, we also need to uh, scale in the engineering side. So we don't have uh, tens and tens and hundreds of uh, guys just waiting for your issue to get reported. Unfortunately, that would be brilliant, but uh, that's not the case. So uh, be patient. We absolutely triage this one by one. Uh, and yes, no more Dear Vesa emails. Hopefully not. Um, <laughs> that's <laughs> turning into a concept, uh, the Dear Vesa uh, uh, meme. Anyway, um, also the comments in SharePoint uh, DevDocs uh, are open at issues in here, and we are uh, triaging them openly uh, in the issue list. So if you see an issue, for example, here, which is tagged as a docs issue, it is coming actually from the docs.microsoft.com uh, site. So it's a comment in the documentation. And also, if you're interested in helping us, that's more than welcome as well, uh, because that, that would actually be highly beneficial for us, not just you to wait uh, us to respond, but the community helping others uh, with the issues as well. Some of you are already super active. Thank you for that. Uh, but there's always room for improvements in there. Good. Uh, <laughs> that is actually true, Vincent. That's a small Easter egg on the <laughs> GitHub. So on the user voice, I wanted to, uh, I've started doing this one a few months back, just to mention and uh, tracking uh, the top 10 user voice entries. We are tracking these uh, internally in uh, our engineering. We do understand that it doesn't seem like there's a humongous amount of always uh, progress on some of these, but they are being triaged and uh, evaluated in the upcoming roadmap all the time internally in, uh, in the engineering. So the taxonomy REST API, it is in the discussions. I cannot promise you when or how it would be resolved, but we do absolutely understand that is a uh, urgent, uh, it is a gap which we need to address. Add a single, a single page application to SharePoint framework. We will potentially have something new to mention on this one uh, by Ignite, when we can actually show you something related on uh, these topics. Uh, Support.NET Core with CSAM, and this is something which is uh, under, let's say, uh, development or planning right now. So we are absolutely planning to do that because that just makes sense uh, to actually have a .NET standard version of CSAM. So it will work in both classic .NET and also in the .NET Core. Uh, and for other topics, uh, I think, well, nothing dramatically new, but many of them are being absolutely considered on a day-to-day basis uh, when we do our internal triage uh, in the engineering. Now, uh, moving on on things, I'm going to keep the pace pretty fast because I want to do a quick demo uh, on uh, the roadmap stuff. Uh, May 2018 release, quite typical release. Uh, new samples, thank you for the contributions on those. Uh, also, a lot of updates on the existing samples, which are more than welcome because that, because that helps on keeping the existing samples up to date on the latest versions. Uh, plenty of updated documentation uh, in the docs.microsoft.com site, and updates on the reusable SPFX controls, which Elio is going to actually demonstrate later today. On the PMP component sites, or uh, PMP CSAM core and PowerShell site, and the engine site, a lot of improvements. Not going to mention them all in here, uh, but we're going to go through them uh, together with Paolo and Irvin slightly later in this call. Uh, also, there's a new version of the PMP JS library, which is coming really soon, the 1.05. It's going to be released uh, pretty, pretty soon. Uh, Patrick is in a call and can confirm is it in hours or within days, but it's coming super soon. Related on that one, by the way, if you're using PMP JS core, uh, the classic PMP JavaScript library, uh, we do recommend that you would move into the PMP JS library. Um, and Patrick, if you can paste in the, the GitHub link for that one, that would be beneficial, because that's the one where we are now investing more from a uh, PMP JavaScript uh, side uh, of the discussion.
Um, Office 365 CLI updated to 1.2 version, uh, new season version available as well, uh, and there's plenty of updates on the documentation on the videos as well. Thank you, Gautam. Thank you, thank you Patrick, as well. Uh, I almost could have actually written that manually on the uh, chat window. Um, thank you very much. Uh, thank you humongously for your contributions. We, again, had a massive list of uh, contributors uh, during this month uh, for SharePoint development topics in GitHub or in our documents or in our samples. Uh, so we're running out of uh, pretty soon uh, room uh, for the one slide to actually list all of you within the monthly call. But thank you. Your contributions are absolutely appreciated because this is the, one of the reasons why all of the other Office 365 and Office uh, services and products are now copying the model from SharePoint because we have the most powerful community. We actually all the time contribute and help each other on making uh, of, of being successful. So, and that clearly works. And so thank you for your uh, efforts. On the company side, uh, we had a uh, pretty typical list of companies from the people to, to whom company we have a permission to say that they've been involved uh, in this work. So if you contributed and your company is not here, uh, I will need to get an email uh, from you with the logo, which is saying explicitly that we are allowed to show, uh, use your logo uh, in the presentations. But these are basically the companies who gave their employees the opportunity to contribute back uh, for the SharePoint community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, for letting your employees to, to work together with us in SharePoint engineering uh, around the topics uh, in the SharePoint and Office 365. On Microsoft side, uh, quite typical list of people, uh, and obviously there's the, uh, there's the PMP crew people, there's engineering people, then there's people like Bob German. Um, thank you, Bob, for uh, contributing with the live community demos as well, and a few other people who contributed uh, on outside of the, let's say, typical group of people. Thank you for your contributions, absolutely valuable, uh, because this helps on growing the community as well. Now, uh, this is a new slide, so 20 minutes in. <clears throat> okay, we're going to make this. Um, so, a few things on the roadmap. This is going to be shown today in the, um, in the build session, which is, I think it's around 3 p.m. Uh, today or something like that. Uh, and basically, and the, what we kind of work next and certain things with some kind of uh, pinpoint here. So. Uh, we've done the LM APIs, GA, Asset Packet, and GA, Tenant Properties, GA. This is as expected. You, if you followed up on what's happening in the SharePoint development and SharePoint Online, you've seen us to move forward. The native graph access from SharePoint Framework uh, has been in preview since spring. And I do know that this might be something that people were hoping to get uh, in production uh, status by SPC, but that unfortunately will not happen. So right now we're looking into getting the native graph access for SharePoint Framework G8 around Ignite. So it's not going to happen uh, in a short time frame, and I do understand that that might be a disappointment, but it's better for you to know the current estimate than being in an unknown situation. <clears throat> then uh, what's really cool, uh, so enterprise solutions from SharePoint to Microsoft Teams uh, is going to go in the preview quite soon. I'm uh, going to do a quick demo on that one today. I'm going to show that one live uh, within after following slides. But what it means is that you can actually implement a SharePoint framework web part and use that as a tab in Microsoft Teams. So you don't actually need to implement anything specific for Microsoft Teams. You just implement your stuff using SharePoint Framework, and voila, it actually works within a SharePoint team. Not just as a SharePoint page, but as an actual application, as a Teams tab application uh, hosted directly and natively from SharePoint. So you actually have, to have the, all of the benefits of SharePoint Framework available for you when you develop uh, a, anything on a Microsoft Teams as a tab. And that's brilliant. One implementation works in both sides, and that's absolutely, absolutely great. We're also looking into uh, having the ISV solutions uh, then surface from Microsoft Teams to SharePoint side. So we're kind of doing what the Microsoft Teams has really well implemented, which, which is the ISV solutions, that they can actually be surfaced on a SharePoint side. That won't come to the preview uh, that soon, so we're looking into getting that one uh, in, in a functional state by Ignite. But it's better to know that it's coming because it's pretty logical that we want to do that uh, direction as well. And there's a global deployment for SharePoint Framework, and this is the one item and the next item, dynamic data and SharePoint Framework components, which I'm going 
going to actually, and I do know this is unfair, but I'm not going to actually talk about in this call uh, because I'm going to do live demos uh, on those on afternoon, and then we're going to do live demos on them on Thursday, so keeping you in suspension uh, by then. And then the SharePoint framework at SharePoint 2019. Uh, SharePoint 2019 in on-premises will include the modern experiences, so you will have SharePoint extensions, you will have SharePoint framework, and all of the goodies around uh, SharePoint framework in on-premises as well. So technically, now after we get this stuff released, you can implement the SharePoint framework web part, uh, which works uh, in on-premises, SharePoint Online, or in Microsoft Teams, and you don't actually have to do anything else uh, to make that happen. Voila! Woo! Um, Oh, on Vincent's question, uh, on the seller dashboards um, and uh, app source, that is a one thing which is not actually on the roadmap because we don't want to actually yet promise that. Uh, it is absolute, well, it's not in the public roadmap. We're working on, on getting that clarified. Uh, we had some resourcing challenges on our side in our team, which is responsible of SharePoint Framework. We will have a new member joining our team pretty soon, um, and he's going to take, or her, uh, he or she is going to take responsibility of leading uh, the, the app source and the ISV story for SharePoint Framework. So that is moving, but I can't promise that will it be available by Ignite. So we absolutely understand why that has to be there. Good. Uh, so quick demo, and what does it mean that SharePoint Framework web part as a Microsoft Teams tab? So basically, a few just screenshots uh, on showing this one and then showing a live, and then we can move to uh, the actual topics. But the whole point is that you write once, and you can surface the same customization in SharePoint as a web part or as a tab in Microsoft Teams. And this doesn't mean that it's a page in a Microsoft Teams, because that is actually supported as well, rather uh, as a application natively hosted within the Microsoft Teams. So you don't have any additional things and elements visible on the page than the, the actual application. Uh, this is uh, super great, because now you can use easy and automatic hosting in SharePoint. So you don't classically in Microsoft Teams, you create a manifest, and then you need to figure out where do you actually host the JavaScript files and assets and everything else. With SharePoint Framework, you don't actually have to worry about that, because SharePoint Framework supports asset packaging. So you can create this PPKG file, which includes JavaScript files and images, deploy that to the SharePoint, and voila, everything is hosted for you for free uh, using the native app catalog uh, deployment model. And that's really, really cool. Um, and all SharePoint Framework tooling benefits, I like including asset packaging. Uh, all of the other benefits are available in SharePoint Framework as well uh, for your tabs uh, in the Microsoft Teams. So let's actually talk about a quick uh, kind of a preview from a UI perspective. I'm going to show this one in live. Here's a web part which, has, which is using the, uh, the SharePoint Framework reusable controls from PMP side, just rendering a list uh, called Legal Matters, and you're able to see the information in the list format. The same application visible in Microsoft Teams would look somewhat more following. It is an actual own application. It's hosted from Microsoft uh, from SharePoint, but it's actually seen as a tab as an application directly in Microsoft Teams without any additional complexity. And we're looking into making this integration work in a way that Microsoft Teams understands the tenant app catalog in SharePoint Online, so it actually is able to surface all of the web parts uh, which are supporting the Microsoft Teams uh, presentation natively from the uh, from the app catalog directly, which is super great. Uh, one step at a time, uh, but it takes, will We'll get there eventually, and that is the, right now the vision, but I can show this uh, in an early demo of this one uh, right uh, after one or two slides. Teams and SaaS, uh, an ISV solution in Teams. So in the same way and as we have the ISV solutions in Teams, well, obviously, it just makes sense for us in SharePoint side then support surfacing those ISV solutions on SharePoint side, rather than introducing an alternative, again, implementation or a category or gallery or whatever, let's actually consolidate. So let's start this journey of thinking implement once and make the same customization work across Office 365 in the easiest possible way, because that just makes more sense than having a competing solutions, right? So one step at a time, we'll start by having the, the web components or SharePoint framework web parts in the Microsoft Teams site, but then the follow-up vision is absolutely get uh, the Teams ISV solutions available in the Microsoft uh, SharePoint site, because it's JavaScript technology, so why couldn't we make this happen? And absolutely, it will make happen. 
Good. Uh, how does it actually work? And just a high level uh, graphical or logical architecture. Uh, so basically, uh, as a administrator, you are deploying uh, SPFX solutions to that catalog. Uh, if the team's application understand that it's a web part which is supported in the to be hosted as a Teams tab, uh, you can actually then host that one directly in Teams, and then your application or JavaScript files are getting downloaded either from Office 365 Public CDN or from a tenant app catalog, depending again on your tenant level settings. But that's up to you. So you get all of the benefits out of SharePoint framework from an implementation perspective and also hosting perspective, but still you're able to then surface this application in Microsoft Teams. And yes, Ralph, this will be, uh, this is about uh, build a rebuild. Uh, and it will have a video, so I'm going to do a live demo on this one on this afternoon in Built, uh, but uh, let's actually do a quick demo on that one right away. So let me share my screen. And uh, let me, let me, let me share my desktop. And yes, I know that people will see what, I'm, what I have on my desktop. That's a good warning. And somebody needs to confirm that I, you're able to see my screen. <laughs> okay, Bob got it. Uh, oh, cool. So let's do this uh, in here. So I'm going to do this uh, from a only from a browser perspective. I do not see your uh, uh, messages in the IM window right now, so I, I'll have to come back on them. I only have one screen on my uh, usage uh, when I'm traveling. So. But here we have a web part. This web part actually is showing uh, information from this list. So this list is actually stored in the root of the tenant. Doesn't technically matter, uh, but it's a list of legal matters. Uh, so that's a normal document library. This one here, uh, however, is a web part. This web part is is using uh, the SPFX reusable controls, which are coming from the PMP side as well. Elio has been, the, uh, let's say, the leading engine uh, in the PMP team for helping this to happen. So let me get this page uh, to an edit mode. So you can actually see that it's a uh, web part, and we are able to then modify the web parts. In this case, relatively simple web part around showing legal matters. And depending on an owner, I can actually filter that. Show me only those items which are relevant for me. Uh, so it's only those where the owner is me, or then I can actually select that it shows only all legal matters depending on who's, regardless who's actually owning them. So let's save the setting, uh, or this one, doesn't really matter, uh, but this is clearly an SPFX web part and application. Now, on team site, I can actually go now to the teams, and I can in team site uh, in any of the channels if I deploy my stuff properly, and I'm not gonna concentrate on that one right now because this is work in progress. But I have here a legal matters uh, application uh, component made in SPFX. If I click that one, it's going to actually show me the same configuration settings as I have in the web part property pane, depending on what, what, whatever you actually have there. So I can actually select filter based on current, and let's put that one, for example, yes. Click apply uh, and save. And voila, uh, we're adding that legal matters application uh, directly on Teams as a Teams tab. Uh, as part of your channel. Now, if I need to reconfigure this, I can absolutely do that by going in here, do settings, and I can actually reconfigure this one with the settings of the web part and the application to apply that to be showing all of the uh, legal matters. And here we go, <coughs> refreshing the data. What? Uh, refreshing the data. Where is my settings? You know, where are my settings? Are they not saved? Okay, demo impact. Uh, it doesn't actually matter if I can actually make this. Let's. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. No, it didn't refresh. Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then we, are, we can actually, that's a demo effect. It's pretty early built. Uh, one thing to notice here also is that if I do this side by side, uh, and there's a bearer instrument or installment note, it is status pending entry. Here's my legal uh, matters actually from SharePoint side, installment note. How do we actually make this side by side? It is too small. Uh, let me do this. Preparer instrument, that's from owner of SIU1 and that works. So it's the first one. So let's actually modify that status. And let's modify the active, that status being active, and let's modify that one to be something else. 
So here we go, and modify pending entry, saving, saved, and one, two, three, there we go, updated uh, on the application. So you can actually see that it's a live application. We're not fooling you on this demo either. Uh, you can see those applications getting updated. And that's, by the way, using Socket.io to get that one uh, reflected on the changes in, in this side. But technically, it's a web part, which is then surfacing the same data from SharePoint as the SharePoint web part being hosted on SharePoint side. Good. I didn't want to take too much time on this one. It is really early, uh, super early uh, from that uh, side of the story. Um, now, I know that there might be a chillion amount of questions on that one. We need to get back on those, uh, potentially talk about them on Thursday's call. We do have a few other items to talk about today as well. Uh, so let's actually move on uh, within the agenda. But I think it's a super, 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 super excitement, exciting uh, and that we're heading to this direction. Uh, and we're able to see the kind of a consolidation of the uh, development models uh, between the, the applications as well. This is early, like mentioned, but one step at a time, one step at a time, and we'll get to the uh, right conclusions. Now, moving on other topics, I think it's Paolo, your turn on taking over the presentation. Sure. Thank sure. you, Visa. And here I am. So. Uh, I will use your uh, slide deck, or better to switch on mine here. It's up to you. The, the, all of the slides, what you had in the team side. So either way, either way. Okay, okay. So um, let's, let's talk a little bit about the new uh, schema changes that we introduced uh, in uh, the latest release of the schema, which is the 2018-05. Uh, uh, first of all, before digging into the uh, details of the uh, schema changes, let me try to uh, explain you why we are still talking about an XML schema nowadays, because maybe someone is saying, what? Do you still work with XML stuff uh, in SharePoint and in PMP provisioning engine? Yes, we do. We do because from a PMP uh, provisioning engine perspective, uh, we all have the capability to store a, a template of a site uh, as a file uh, on a file system or in uh, SharePoint Online in a document library or wherever you want, for example, in a blob storage folder container. And when you do that, you can use an XML uh, file or a .pmp file, which is an open XML document which inside still has uh, an XML document, which will represent uh, the uh, full structure of a uh, provisioning template. The uh, fact that we have uh, an XML file to represent uh, a provisioning template uh, makes it possible uh, for us to write or edit uh, uh, those templates using any text editor, which can be, of course, Visual Studio Code or Visual Studio or whatever else you like to use uh, to do XML uh, editing, so that you are, are free and you have the uh, capability to manually edit and maintain uh, your templates if you like and uh, from some degrees of perspective you can even uh, copy some of the old school uh, SharePoint uh, feature framework XML uh, uh, content uh, into the uh, provisioning template uh, XML. I'm thinking, for example, about uh, the <coughs> field uh, definition, which can be almost be copied from uh, the uh, feature framework to the new uh, PMP provisioning template. And that's why usually every uh, five or six months, we release uh, an updated version of the schema in which we uh, add uh, uh, more new capabilities uh, and uh, we improve uh, the coverage uh, from a functionality perspective uh, of the PMP provisioning engine. But the schema is just the beginning of every new development in the PMP provisioning engine. In fact, uh, the PMP provisioning schema has its own uh, repo on GitHub, and it is the one highlighted in this slide. And it is built uh, based on community efforts as like as the engine. But first of all, whenever we want to introduce a new functionality in the provisioning engine, we uh, update the schema. We collect uh, in a branch uh, which is called the experimental branch uh, of the PMP provisioning schema repo, the uh, proposals for changes as a pull request or just as issues uh, in an issue list. And once we are ready, uh, to ship, to release a new version of the schema, we define a new name. For example, right now we just released the one for May 2018. 
and we move the schema into the uh, provisioning engine, so in the core library of PMP. From that moment in time, we start building uh, the engine, so the functionality at the engine level. So first of all, we release the schema, and usually later on, <laughs> we release the support uh, at the engine level. Uh, this is not what happened uh, this time, because we decided to be uh, as fast as we could, so we released uh, the May 2018 schema together with uh, the functionalities at the engine level, and that's why today we will have uh, a double discussion, this one and uh, another one, just following this one with Erwin, about the functionalities at the engine level. But as I said, usually every six, six uh, months we release a new uh, version of the schema, and usually in a couple of months from then uh, we have uh, full support at the engine level. Right now we have quite a lot of uh, schema versions out there, but just uh, the, la the latest three editions of the schema, so uh, May 2018, January 2018, and May 2017, are those uh, uh, still, let me say, valid or supported. Uh, meanwhile, all the older uh, versions uh, are deprecated, and you should uh, avoid using them anymore. Of course, if you already have uh, uh, templates, XML templates stored somewhere, and you want to upgrade them to the latest uh, uh, version of the schema, we have a command let that you can use, which is convert PMP provisioning template. You provide the path of the uh, old XML uh, template file, and you uh, select what is the schema that you want to target. Of course, you can say to schema latest, and you will upgrade them your template to the latest version, or you can just uh, specify any uh, specific version that you want to target. But now, <clears throat> let me dig into the uh, news and into the new capabilities that we introduced uh, in May in the engine. Uh, from a tenant uh, level perspective, which is an element that we have in the schema and that we <clears throat> introduced in January this year, we added the capability to support uh, web uh, API permissions so that when you uh, want to release a template which will also include a SharePoint framework package, an SPPKG file, in which inside of its manifest you declare, for example, to need some of the uh, permissions to consume the Microsoft Graph or any third-party APIs, you will be able to uh, declare at the engine uh, level and at the provisioning template level that you want to uh, automate from an ALM perspective and from an administration perspective the grant of those permissions so that you will not need uh, uh, an IT guy uh, browsing to the UI of uh, the new central administration of SharePoint online to grant those permissions or <coughs> use PowerShell to explicitly uh, grant those permissions. But you simply can do that through the uh, provisioning template. We introduced support for site design and site scripts. So uh, nowadays you can have a site design that we call uh, a uh, provisioning template, but you can also have a PMP provisioning template uh, that will automatically apply a site design made of some site scripts to a target site. Uh, and, and you should avoid to create a loop, of course. <laughs> and from a tenant perspective, we still have another capability, which is the storage entities capability, which allows you to store um, tenant-level settings uh, in your uh, tenant if you need to reuse them in multiple uh, solutions or sites. From a web settings, we support the upside, so you can specify the URL of the upside to which you want to connect uh, a site when you want to <coughs> associate that site to a hub. We introduced uh, just uh, at the schema level, not yet at the engine level, uh, support for external lists. So now we have uh, at the schema level the capability to store information about the external lists, um, some other minor changes like the right security, uh, as well as at the document set level, we uh, now support the XML documents section so that you can add uh, custom uh, settings uh, at the document set level if you need to uh, uh, 
push a little bit more your customization when uh, releasing document sets. And last but not least, uh, at client side pages level, we have the support for uh, the headers. So you can uh, keep the default header, or you can hide the header, or you can update the background image of a header, stuff like that. And you can set the title of a client side page uh, uh, so that it will become the title of the page when you will publish it as a news, uh, in a, for example, in a communication site. So let me <coughs> switch. Uh, uh, Paolo, quite Paolo, quick. Paolo, yeah. Paolo, yeah. sorry, before you go there, and just a quick note on here. So first of all, the, the comparing this one, the site designs and site scripts, the tenant level configuration uh, will never be in site designs or site script, or never say never. Uh, but this is one way, so you can use the PMP provisioning engine to provision site designs and site scripts, which will then for example, uh, be available for end users. And if somebody in this call is wondering, why isn't Microsoft natively supporting all of this stuff inside the science and science scripts? There's actually a pretty logical uh, conclusion on that one. We want to, and we will at some point potentially, but community is much faster. An open source community, an open source way of working is much, much, much faster than the work what we do in engineering. And actually, community has even more resources because people spend every, every now and then hour here and there. That sums up to be much more time than we have in engineering to uh, do all of this stuff. That's why the PMP provisioning engine, for example, is evolving so fast comparing to the site designs and such scripts. Yes, follow. Feel free. Sure. Take it away. And that's it. And thanks for being my lovely assistant, Lisa. <laughs> because you. <laughs> No you worries. The slide deck for me. Thank you. I forgot to take over as a presenter. But let me switch very, very quickly on my dev environment to show you a sample XML uh, uh, document built uh, on the new schema, just to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. And then uh, I will uh, leave the stage uh, to uh, Erwin to show the engine uh, in action with this kind of stuff. So let me know when you see my screen. Got it. Yep. OK, cool. Uh, so, uh, this is a, a provision template XML file with the latest version of the schema, of course. And at the tenant level, as you can see, we have the site designs uh, uh, collection, which can be made of uh, uh, one or more site design items, uh, which can refer to site scripts, uh, so that basically at the engine level, you can build uh, a hierarchy of site design with site scripts inside of them. And you can then, of course, uh, uh, use them uh, or recall them in your provisioning, as well as you can do that from a storage entity perspective, so you can create a bunch of storage entity items with a key and a value, and they will be stored as tenant-wide uh, level settings. Moreover, we have the Web API permissions uh, uh, section through which uh, you can uh, uh, grant uh, permissions for a specific resource with a specific uh, uh, permission scope, uh, as I told you before. So you can play uh, around uh, the settings uh, of a SPPKG package, which includes uh, custom permissions to consume uh, the graph uh, or external APIs. Moreover, at the web settings level, let me make a, a search for it, uh, web settings, OK. We have the capability to provide the hub site URL and the comments on site pages uh, disabled if needed. And moreover, at lists level, so list instance, we have <coughs> the write security as well as the read security attributes. And for example, uh, right here, we should have uh, here the capability to specify some data source settings to support uh, external lists. So if you want, uh, you will be pretty soon able to support the external list through the provisioning engine. And again, from a document set perspective, <coughs> We have support for XML documents. As you can see, in the definition of a content type, uh, you can provide an XML document section to give uh, custom forms, for example, and settings for custom forms. And last but not least, uh, at client side pages, we do support the header. And we can have uh, an header of type uh, uh, default. We can fully disable the header. Or we, we can have a custom header with a custom image. And if you want, a translate X and Y if you want to do uh, some uh, a nice uh, uh, animation uh, when you scroll uh, your uh, uh, header uh, across the page. 
Uh, that's it from an XML schema perspective, and as I said, it is already released and by default supported by the engine. And that's why now, I think with Erwin, we will see it in action with the provisioning engine. Yep. Yes. So let me share my screen. Sure. Uh, there's a question from Serge while Erwin is doing that. Is it possible to grant or just request permissions? Grant or request? And the answer is request. Uh, so, uh, so <clears throat> in the in the provisioning and uh, template, you can request permissions, but then the the engine itself doesn't automatically approve the permissions, right? The engine pr approves. Oh. Approves. We do the approval. It approves as well. Okay, got it. Yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah. That one from the last so discussion. So the request is coming from the app package. That one requests. Oh, absolutely. It. Yes. And then, absolutely. then the engine approves it. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I have uh, I have two provision templates here on my screen. Um, uh, so <clears throat> I hope I don't steal a bit of your thunder of uh, of the of the sessions in. Uh, at build, uh, by showing these templates, uh, but okay, uh, good, good. good. Um, so there's two solution, two two, uh, two provisioning templates here. Um, the one you're looking at right now, I already um, applied. So let me um, so so you can actually see the full template. This one I already applied because this one takes a bit longer and it's a bit boring to look at a progress bar. But what this one does, it um, it uploads a an, an solution package. There we go. Then, um, when it's done, we double check that your CDN is configured correctly, and we make sure that there is an origin for the public CDN here. So we enable the public CDN, Office 365 CDN, and we make sure that this origin is already configured there. If it's already there, we won't do anything. We'll just leave it as it is. But if it's not there, we will add it. And this, this we add it here um, uh, because if you enabled this in the very early stages, uh, this. <clears throat> this origin was not specified uh, by default there, and it is required for SPFX. So we just added that here to the template. Then a bit down here, um, because in the solution that we're provisioning here, one of these uh, or a few of the um, uh, uh, parts in there require access to the Microsoft Graph. So there will be your request outstanding. And with this Web API permission scope that we define here, we grant that uh, request. Basically, so here we say, okay, you can do uh, sites read all on the graph, um, so no worries there. Um, quick, quick, so super yeah. quick comment on that one. Obviously, it does not break any permission flows because to be able to execute this template, you have to be a tenant administrator. So. Correct, correct, correct. Yes, and then I have basically an empty provisioning template here. So basically, that's that's what this template does. It basically uploads a packet, uh, configures the CDN, and grants the permission. Then I have the this template, which is a bit more complete. And here I use a couple of things from that we already have in there for like months, or if not years already. So for instance, here we, we parameterize a couple of things. We have a city here, a portal title, a stock symbol that we configured as a parameter so we can easily refer to them in, this, in, the, in the rest of the templates by uh, without actually writing that everywhere deep down that we want to have the Microsoft stock symbol in our web parts to be shown. And with these parameters, you can even expose them. If you use the PowerShell commandlet, you can set them, send them through the PowerShell commandlet, so it will, they will be replaced with the actual values at provisioning time. Here we set a storage entity, and in this case, there's a storage entity on the, because there is an SPFX web part that requires access to a certain list, and you see that there's actually just a big bunch of uh, parameters that we specify here. So here we have the collection ID, the site collection ID, and then here we point to the host, to the site, to the list URL of the list called PNP tiles. Where does that list come from? We provision that a bit later here in the template. So we create that storage entity. Then um, if we go here, then here you see that I install the app into the site. Uh, let me also wrap this one here so you can see that a bit better. Here I install the app, and you see that we use a token because we have no idea what the ID of that app will be. Um, so here we uh, use a token to um, uh, dynamically uh, figure out the ID of the app and uh, install that app into the site. Then, uh, because I'm applying this to a hub site, um, this, uh, we set the hub site navigation, which is effectively just the global navigation of the site. So what we do here is we add two pages to the global navigation, being personal and organizational, uh, and they point to these pages here. 
Uh, those pages will be provisioned a bit down here. So there's a couple of side fields. This is old, like old school provisioning template, a couple of content types here that we do here. Here we have the client side pages, and here it becomes interesting again. So here is the portal homepage, and <clears throat> enable comments is set to false. We publish it, and then we specify the header. So basically we say, okay, it's a custom header and point to this specific image here, which is located in the site in the assets folder. And that's it. Um, and the, uh, and yeah, you could use a web part there for that, but now we have this built in and use the built in functionality of a client side page with a header. And then we have a couple of sections and in these the sections we uh, install, um, uh, specific uh, specific web parts with all kinds of properties in there, etc., etc., etc. And we go up and down, and here with the personal page, the same idea with no comments we allow. We set the same here on the personal page, and a different set of web parts here. Then we have a couple of lists, nothing special there. And here we add some um, custom actions, uh, being um, SPFX extensions. Uh, application customizers. So uh, we have the footer and a header and a redirect and a classification things. And then here we upload the actual image file to the assets folder. So it's the same file that we've referred to in the header of the page. So that is the template in a nutshell. So let me show you the site. This is the communication site as it comes out of the box. And if we go to PowerShell, I'm already connected to it. Um, by a use some little extension in PowerShell allows me to see the site title that I'm connected to in my prompt. There we go, communications three. And I say, uh, and if we look here, there is my portal file. And I say apply, apply PNP provisioning template portal XML. And there we go. <clears throat> We added a little initializing engine message there because this step usually takes a bit longer and you might like, is it doing something? It actually is initializing the engine. What it effectively is doing behind the scenes, it was actually initializing all the tokens. Um, so all the values for the tokens. And that means it connects to your site and retrieves some known um, uh, artifacts and maps them into an in-memory uh, list of tokens. Now it goes through all the artifacts that it discovers. Uh, through all the lists, um, it will go through the pages, etc. There might be a few warnings coming up, depending a bit. And um, at the last step, it will also install the app to the site. Um, it will create custom actions, etc., etc., etc. And now we can do a virtual dancing on the stage. The we can do that. Yeah, exactly. So there, so there's this warning. This warning will pop up a few times more. Nothing to be worried about. Da, 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 da. All of the work what uh, Urban is doing here is related on something which we'll announce later today, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but you'll get the benefits out of what uh, Urban is doing to, uh, in here um, pretty soon. So we're going to announce this uh, later today, but then the availability will be most likely in SPC. But uh, basically, this is demonstrating the end-to-end -end provisioning flow uh, for modern uh, portals, and this is actually super, super cool stuff. Crossing fingers, everything works, hopefully. Come on. There we go. So, no errors at least, so that's good. So, it w uh, can already, the little disclaimer, it will not look good in the current state. <laughs> right now. Okay, but here's the, the, the site as it was, and if I uh, go to the home page, there we go. We have the new site uh, with my banner header there, my new title. There is an extension that just throws up a an, an, an dialog. There's my weather web part set to uh, Helsinki. There is my stock symbol with Microsoft, etc., etc. Now, there is a little issue with hub sites that I personally find a bit annoying, but that's how it is. You see that the navigation has not been updated, and reloading it uh, is also not. Ah, now it actually did update it. Good. Okay. Sometimes even a reload doesn't update it. But there we go. There's my navigation here. And if I go to uh, personal, you will get a uh, different uh, different page with different uh, functionality in there, and um, etc. So this is the uh, uh, the new ad, the new schema at work with uh, the new functionality in there, and um, 
So what I didn't demo here is the functionality to provision site designs and site scripts, but as Paolo mentioned, it's there. Um, and that's actually a great way to like sort of pre-provision your tenant. Um, so you have a, say you have, say you're a consultant and you get a new customer with a tenant and you want to roll out a couple of site designs by definite, by default. You can create a provisioning template, push them out, and uh, all the site designs and scripts are available for that specific tenant. Um, so yeah, that's my demo. Okay, uh, Irvin, uh, sorry, Elio, um, do you, uh, if we go slightly on top of uh, the hour, so is that fine? Yeah, no problem for me. Okay, so we're going to go slightly late today, and I do apologize on that one, but let's switch to Elio and have a quick look on the latest on the SPFX controls. Thank you, Irvin. Thank you, Paolo. Uh, it's good to see the role of the of the engine as well. And like mentioned, the engine will be more and more moving to this kind of an overall tenant-level configuration uh, setup, so you can use that for setting up your tenants, test tenants, uh, really easily. And then site designs and site scripts, if you prefer to use them, uh, you can absolutely use them inside of the tenant settings as well. But Elio is going to talk about slightly on the SharePoint framework control still, and we'll get this recorded. Uh, the video will be out in 24 hours typically um, if you need to drop uh, on the hour. But Elio, take it away. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yep. That's all good. Funny. Okay, perfect. So, first of all, I won't take it uh, very long. Um, I can say that we just have a new version out of uh, the PMP uh, property controls. So just before this uh, meeting, I published them. But what are these reusable controls? They will give you a lot of benefit to your projects, but what exactly are they? So first of all, there are two projects. Two projects, one for property pane uh, things, uh, property controls like a date picker, like a term picker, like a list picker. But we also have controls for the content zone of your solutions, like the uh, web part title, you would probably know every web part is using, which is actually a first party um, control, which we converted to a third party control, which you now can use within our solution and within your solutions as well. We have the placeholder, which shows you a placeholder that you still have to configure your web part. And since the latest release, since uh, release 1.3.0, we have now also a taxonomy picker, which you can use within your uh, web parts, uh, not only for the property pane, but also for within your content zone. And um, also a list picker, which is also available. I will show the latest ones, uh, which just became available. So as mentioned, uh, we just released version 1.6.0 uh, just a couple of minutes ago. It should be one hour because we're running uh, one hour already. Um, in this version, we have a new property field collection data, um, which allows you to add list data, list configuration, uh, but list configuration like a JSON object representation for configuring any types uh, of data you need within your web part. It's kind of flexible. Uh, you define which fields you want to insert. Uh, we support uh, strings, um, booleans, numbers, and dropdowns. We also have the property field order. You can define a couple of uh, items, and you can define the, own or, uh, the order by just dragging and dropping. We have now also a swatch color picker, and we have a couple of enhancements being made and some fixes. For the React controls, these are the controls which can be used within your component uh, or within your web part um, section on the page. And since version 3, we have the taxonomy picker and the list picker and a couple of issue, uh, issues that were fixed. So how do you get started? First of all, two projects. You have to install them via NPM, of course, because we're running an SPFX uh, project. And we do it under the SPMP scope, and we have two, uh, one, uh, two projects for that, SPFX property controls and the SPFX controls React. I'm not going to tell more about that. I'm just going to dive into the demo, which is uh, more fun than just watching slides. So. Everything lives on GitHub, so if you have issues, just go to our issue list, add them there. And we also have documentation, so documentation can be just be found on the top 
of our GitHub repository. And the documentation is somewhat similar for both projects, although uh, depending on which controls you are going to use, it's, uh, it's a bit different. So first things first, installing everything. Installing is quite simple, but once you got it installed, there's one thing you need to configure, and that's the localization file, which need to be specified in your config.json file. We have a couple of issues already for uh, from people that forgot it. Um, this is one thing which is on the home page. That's why we added it over there, because before it was somewhere else. So less confusion. This is the one thing you have to add. And once you add the test, you can start using them. So let's dive in the real demo. I created two small web parts. Like, for instance, this one uh, and my first one. This is an empty web part, and actually, it's not really loading everything. OK, let's don't bother with it. Uh, it's not loading the image at the top, so probably something is failing behind the scenes from this UI fabric. So what are we going to do? I'm first going to show the new collection data picker. Um, so what I'm going to do is add it over here inside my web art file. And everything can be found within the documentation. So the first thing you have to do is import references to the property fields collection data. Once you inserted these references, you can start using it within your web art like this. So the property field collection data contains some labels, a value, which is specified within your web art, and then a couple of fields. These fields, that's the business logic you define. So for me, for my web part, I currently define a title, a description, and an image. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a slideshow, or the slideshow is already created, uh, although it's not yet loaded, because there's nothing in my property pane at the moment. I've already add another field, uh, which is a number field. Um, we have a text field within SPFX, but the text field doesn't or allows you to insert numbers. But the problem is it always returns you strings. So then you have to parse it to an integer. This field is automatically going to give you a number so that you don't have to convert it again. So once everything is reloaded, I will reload, reload my screen. And let's go to configure. And now you see a new button, manage news highlights. If I click on this, this is opening the new collection data uh, picker. So in this collection data picker, I can add some things like, for instance, a title. And I'm just going to copy it from my list so that um, I, you don't have to see me typing. We can add new things. We can remove new things uh, that we just have added, in case you don't want it anymore. And let's add the last one. So then we have a couple of things. So let's put it like that. And description. And then the last thing is the URL. And we can add save. And if you go back, everything should be still in place. If we apply this, it will show my banner. It's rotating every uh, two seconds. I can change the interval. I can say every five seconds. And if I say something like, this is a test, you will automatically see that it shows you a notification. Hey, uh, this is actually not a number. So convert it back to a number, like for instance, one or five. If we click on apply, now this slideshow is going to run every five seconds. So it's going to change every five seconds. So that's the collection data. Um, let's add another web part to show the controls. So in version 1.3.0, we got two great controls added, the list picker and the, uh, what was it? The list picker and the term picker. So let's open the list picker and, or let's go and add the list picker and the term picker in there. So at the moment, we don't have anything in here. So same thing. First, you have to include your references, like, for instance, the list picker. 
And then you have to add the codes, like for instance, for the list picker, it's this thing. So the list picker requires a context. Why the context? Because it's going to do some uh, calls to SharePoint for finding the lists or for finding the libraries, the things you need. Uh, so we use the context uh, for that, and that's what you have to pass. We have some labels, a placeholder. You can specify the base templates. Uh, for this one, I configured it to only retrieve all the document libraries uh, or all the libraries, includes all the hidden libraries, no or uh, yes or false. Uh, do you want to have a multi-select one? That's something you can also do. Let me set my screen like that, and then we can see the difference. So now I have a single selection. If I specify this to true, and I'll wait until my project is reloaded, then it should be able to now do a multi-selection like this. And one so thing, one thing, Ilya, Ilya, sorry, one thing to notice here because somebody might be always wondering. So, what's the difference between these and Office UI Fabric? Well, the difference is that Office UI Fabric is generic. This one understands that it's in SharePoint, so you don't actually have to query. You don't do the REST queries. We do that all for you inside of the controls. That's indeed correct. Thank you, Bessa, for mentioning. Yeah. So what we can also do is we can also add the taxonomy picker. This is a picker which is also converted from the property pane controls over to the React controls. And that's also a fair point from VESA. Uh, we are using Office UI Fabric for this. Uh, so that means that we have a dependency on React. So these controls can only be used in React. That's why also the project is called React Controls. What we are going to do in the future we don't know yet, uh, but now with uh, Angular version 6 coming out and uh, or that came out last week and Angular Elements, it could be that uh, there's a new project coming. We don't know yet. So what can be done with the taxonomy picker is a similar approach like you have in the lists, like you can search HR, but you can also click on this thing and then we have our basic um, taxonomy picker, and in here I can say IT, and you see that it immediately switched. I can say, okay, retrieve me the document libraries, and I see that there are two items linked with IT in my document library. I didn't want to show any other uh, functionality because the demo that Pessa already gave with, the, with Teams, he already showed the list view by part, so then I quickly uh, did something else so that the list view by part has been removed and some other kind of functionality was added during this meeting. So I hope that you see some real advantage of using these controls because these controls can really speed up everything. Um, you don't have to uh, reinvent the wheel every now and then, uh, so just use what is available to you. If there are questions, if there are feedback, if there are issues, just go to our issue list, uh, submit them. IDs are always welcome. Um, so that's Contrib it for me. Contributions, contributions, pull requests, everything is more than welcome. Yeah, absolutely. indeed. <clears throat> because this is really, this is where the community can significantly help each other in the future because this helps significantly on reducing your development time because you don't have to implement the wheel once again and again, like Ilya mentioned. Now, we do apologize we went way uh, on the, over the time uh, because of the additional Microsoft Teams demo, which I did. I do apologize on that one. Um, but uh, the recording will be available within 24 hours. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Paolo, Irvin, and Elio for your great demos. Uh, I'll post social media notes when the video is available. And for those who might be in build, uh, uh, join me on the afternoon on the build session. On the other ones who are not in build, we're going to do live demos on AFX stuff on Thursday, special interest group call. So I'm going to uh, do the similar demos what I'm doing in build related on the new stuff. Uh, on the SharePoint framework. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you for your contributions. Please keep the feedback coming, and uh, have a great week. Bye-bye.